Hey guys, it's Ben. Thank you for checking out this message. If you want to hear more messages from Catalyst Church, just search Catalyst Church of Carrollton on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We hope this message speaks to you, encourages you. We hope it builds your life. We hope it builds you. We are for you. The best is yet to come. And if you want to give or donate to what God's doing here at Catalyst Church, you can go to IamCatalyst.net slash donate. The best is yet to come. We love you guys. If you haven't noticed or heard me, I'm not in the building. I am at the Falcons game with my son, Garrett. Uh, I hope that you guys are doing amazing. The presence of God is already thick in that place. I wanted to tell you, next week, I am going to preach a message. I, it will actually be my first sermon as a 38-year-old. I don't even know what I'm going to preach on yet, but the message is going to be called 38 and Feeling Great. I know that's the title. And then two weeks from today, I'm going to start a series, our Christmas series, called Adore Him. I hope that the next month you will invite some people to church. It's going to start with me preaching my birthday message because it didn't take me to 40 to lose my filter. I lost it a long time ago, and we are going to celebrate Christmas like never before. But today, today where the magic happens, Mark is about to bring a word. So I want y'all to stand here and think give honor where all of us do in their preach right now today. I love y'all. I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you take the place away. I hope you bring forward to the this Let's give the Lord that hand clap of praise. Amen. Man, I, uh, I miss Ben. I don't know about y'all. I miss it. It just feels, feels young to be seated. I won't, I won't do it. Look, I, I've, I've been in a lot of services and, and preached to some, a lot of messages where um, I have forgotten to say you can be seated. And there is just, there is no awkwardness like the awkwardness of feeling like you're supposed to stand and you can't you do sit down. So it, it does go on. So y'all, y'all can be seated. Y'all can also stand when you want to, but we're, we're, uh, we're grown here. So y'all, y'all worship the Lord with me as, as we preach and, 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 and follow through with what God has for us. Amen. I do. I miss Ben today. I, I, I'm so so awesome and thankful that, that he did that video message. It's uh, it's different without him here, um, but I, I appreciate everything that he does, and he enjoyed or he deserves rather some time away, just like all of us. So I hope he is enjoying himself. Uh, him and Garrett are doing uh, a lot of fun things today, and I'm looking forward to him getting back. Something that I've noticed when we moved south. 17, 18 years ago, maybe more than that now. I, I don't know. That's how so you know when you're getting old, time just works a little differently. You know, it was, sometimes it's yesterday and it was 20 years ago. Sometimes you know, it feels like it was a long time. But uh, uh, when we moved to the South, I thought I was in the South. I the above us, they were absolutely angry. Um, and I didn't feel like I was a Yankee until so I moved to Georgia. And I felt like I was a Yankee. And so everybody's, uh, but one of the biggest differences, there are two big differences about the South um, from where I grew up in my, in my life. One is there's a lot of people that talk a lot slower down here than what they do where, where I'm from and where I grew up. Uh, there was a, a gentleman that I worked with uh, when I first moved down here. He was a maintenance man, and it was great, David Lee. Uh, he was a really good maintenance man, and I came down with a, another manager uh, to, a, to a factory down here, and the manager from the Indiana facility was trying to, to have a conversation with the maintenance man, and, and David Lee was just giving him a good instruction, uh, telling him how it was going to be and what was happening. And Wayne, I'll never forget Wayne, he said, Dave Lee, I don't, I don't know what, what's, what's going on, but, but you were talking really slow. He said, did they, do you have like a, a, uh, a knob or something we can turn you up, get you going a little faster? And without missing a beat, David Lee says, well, Wayne, I just guess I haven't gotten around to putting that in yet. <laughs> so, 
talk a little bit slower down here, some of us now. Uh, some of us still get wound up, and, and Ben is like that, gets wound up pretty good. The other thing that I've noticed about the South is birthdays are a little different down here. That some of you guys celebrate your birthday for like a week at a time or a month. At, it's, it's, it's a birth month for you have a birthday. So it really tickled me to, to hear Ben talk about he's already got a birthday message planned. And, you know, you just do things a little different. But I'm excited for it. I'm excited for what God's going to do. I'm excited for today's message. And, and as I was preparing and, and just looking to God of, of what he wanted me to, to bring forth today, it, it, was, it, it started getting a little bit different. So, I, you know, I want to challenge you guys a little bit today, and I, I know we're just coming out of a holiday, and we're in that that weirdness between Thanksgiving and Christmas, where nothing really gets done, right? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, not really. But it feels like sometimes, especially with kids, that, that you know they, they go just back to school, but they're only there for a couple weeks, and nothing nothing really happens during that time. They come home, and they're like, "What'd you do today?" Well, we watched a movie. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> they, they watch Polar Express for about five days in a row in, in certain classes, and it's, everything's pretty predictable about this time of year. We, we, uh, we, we've taken a lot of effort to, to try to get and prepare ourselves for Thanksgiving dinner and the aftermath thereof, and we just, a lot of us just roll that right on through Christmas. And we just kind of uh, absorb ourselves into the holidays. It's a great time. But today I, I want to just challenge us a little bit and just dive into God's Word, if you will, with me. Something that God really laid on my heart. And we're going to turn to James chapter number 1, verse number 2. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Imagine James sitting in a room, this wise teacher, and he starts like so many so many good, wise teachers do, and he starts by just throwing you a curveball, something that, that just isn't exactly what you expected. It's always exciting when someone uh, is sharing something with me, and, and, and immediately it, it's, you know, because you get in this cadence when, when, you're, when you're hearing someone talk where they say something, and you kind of know what they're going to say, and it's just this normal back and forth and back and forth. And James right here immediately goes in and he throws this curveball and he says, consider trials an opportunity for joy. Hold on, James. Wait a minute. That's a little different. Seems and sounds a little bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? But, but let's think about it. Every trial that we face is a setup for a breakthrough. It's like God's personal training ground for us for our faith, that it's molding it, it's shaping it into the people that God designed us to be, right? It, it's, it's something different. It's not, it's not thinking about things the same way that we've always thought about it, right? The, the, the way that we, we think, well, something bad, oh, it must be bad. I must have done something bad. I must, something bad must be going to happen because I'm struggling. But James is giving us a, a little different take on it when he said, consider it joy. Take a second and look at it a different way. Let, let, me, let, me, let me share it and let me paint the picture uh, so that we can maybe wrap our heads around it, uh, this idea a little bit differently. Think about a butterfly emerging from a cocoon. The struggle that this delicate creature, what we see, goes through is intense. It pushes and it strains against the confines of that cocoon. Its wings and its body constorted in just this little, little small package. But that struggle is essential for what that butterfly is trying to do. If it stops fighting, it dies. If someone comes along and takes that butterfly and pulls it out of the cocoon, it just falls to the ground and dies. Hear me today, Catalyst. Sometimes you don't need rescue. Sometimes you're meant to struggle a little bit. I want to preach to you just for a little while today 
The struggle is for a purpose. The struggle is for a purpose. It's easy for us to, to see and to think about a butterfly when, when you see them and it, it's, it's beautiful. And they, there, there's whole exhibit, butterfly exhibits that you can go to, all the different colors, all the beautiful pieces, all the, all, all the, it's, it's, they're very, to me, not very big. They're very just magical creatures. They, they're, they're beautiful and they, you, you look at them and it, it, it's, it's easy to just get caught up in what it is and what that finished product looks like. To see that, that think that it just it, something happens and, and just poof, they're there. And they're, they're just, it's, it's like all of a sudden they go from nothing and you're like, well, I never see baby butterflies. <laughs> There's never any pregnant butterflies. It just kind of happens, right? They just exist. And what's funny is we think of, uh, of, of, of mature Christians that, that same way sometimes. We look at our pastor, we look at we look at the, the leaders in our church and we're like, man, I don't ever see them struggle like that. And I don't I don't ever see them to, to where they just look like a newborn, a, a new creature or something, someone brand new. It's just all of a sudden they're just there and they're just perfect and they just sing and, and they just the, the, our praise team just hits every note and they just do everything right and the musicians are just that good. Everything is just all it's just perfect. And there is never any growth that we really see sometimes. So as a Christian sitting in a, in, a, in a seat in a service, when you first come in and you're struggling and you're going through trials and tests, sometimes it's easy to misunderstand what that process and we're not really getting what that process looks like. But it's the very struggle that that, that caterpillar goes through and as it's as the butterfly's wings are gaining strength and the effort that's required for it to break free is what pushes that life giving fluid into its wings enabling it to fly that struggle is what leads to the most beautiful time of that of the life cycle of that butterfly some of us today have just been going through a caterpillar stage and you're just, you just feel like you're stuck there. You're not moving very fast. You're not going where you think you need to go. You may not look like what you think you need to look like. You may, you may think that you're not, you're not perfect the way that you want to be. You're not checking all the boxes in your life. You haven't found the partner that you want. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't uh, laid, you haven't, you haven't found and, and entered into the healthy relationship that you know that you're deserving of, that you don't have the job that you're supposed to have, that you just seems like you struggle. Your kids don't listen because they're bad and they act like their mama and they just, they don't do what they're supposed to do. And you're just going through that struggle and everything seems like it takes longer than what it should and everything is difficult. And we get in those moments, and there's a lot of people that hit those points in life, those caterpillar stages in their life, where they go there, and they're there, and they get frustrated. And they don't have the foresight to see that God is preparing them for something greater down the line. That everything that they're going through right now is for a purpose. That the struggle, the trials, the tests, that God is going to take that, use it, strengthen you, and make it so that you can take those steps that you need to take to one day not be a caterpillar anymore. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You see, what we don't understand, and sometimes we're all guilty of this, that when we're in that caterpillar stage, that we don't understand that God already has a plan for us. God said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, and they are good. I know what I have planned for you, and it's something beautiful. I know, Son of God, what I want for you, and it's something amazing. Where I want you to go. God looks at you and He says that He, in His mind, in His infinite wisdom, He already has exactly what He wants for you. And it's a good thing. He wants that butterfly lifestyle for you. That's His plan for your life. 
They're good and not evil, the Bible says. But when we're in that caterpillar stage and we're struggling, sometimes when that struggles for a purpose, church, God has something special for us. God's not done yet. Yeah, there, there's those old sayings that, that, that those, those older than us would what that is. Are you struggling? Well, then God's not through yet, right? Romans chapter number 5, verses 3 to 5. Now, let's apply this to Romans. And, and Romans echoes this, this statement uh, when, it, when it says, Rejoice in problems. Why? Why, why am I supposed to rejoice in problems? Because God said, in this mess, character is formed. Through your problems, through your struggle, strength comes out of that for you. And it's strength in that struggle that you don't realize in the moment that when you're really fighting, that what you're doing is you're exercising muscles, that if you weren't going through that struggle, then wouldn't be getting exercised. And in that strength and in that, that struggle, character is formed. Hope is solidified. And this hope isn't just wishful thinking. It's a confident expectation that God is actively working in the midst of our trials. That His love, powered by the Holy Spirit, becomes the anchor in those stormy seas of life that doesn't let us get pushed off course and go somewhere else. It's that sail in our life that allows us to navigate where we're supposed to go that takes us from that cocoon and gives us the strength to struggle to break free for those things in our life so that one day we can spread our wings we can do what God wants us to do. Do we navigate those waves of difficulty, of struggle, of trial, of test, knowing that God is there with us and at the help? That He's given us the gift of His Spirit to live within us to give us strength. And then there's there's Paul again in Romans 8, 17, and 18, dropping some more wisdom. He says, we're not just navigating life alone. Hear me, saying to God. You're not just navigating your struggles by yourself. You see, sometimes we get so, so beat down and, and, and accepting of the problems that we have, our eyesight goes from here to here. And when your eyesight is here and you're letting, you're accepting of the defeat, that's what, that's the difference. You're accepting of the defeat and accepting the struggle that oh, I'm just going to struggle forever. I'm just going to be here forever. I'm just going to be wrapped up in this cocoon forever. This is my life now. This is where I'm at. This is, this must be what God has for me because this is where I'm at. The whole time, God's saying this is just a transition period for you. So don't let your eyesight get down and look nowhere but right in at your feet because when you do that, you can't see What's around you? You can't see that there are people standing beside you. You can't spiritually see that God is right there with you the whole time. Because I don't feel it. Maybe the reason you don't feel it is because it's not His to do. The work that he has is yours to do. But if God knows in his infinite wisdom that the struggles and tests that you're going to face in the days, weeks, months, and years to come, then you have to go through this. Because if he just plucks you out of the cocoon, there's no strength in your wings anymore. If he just takes you and removes you from that problem, but you haven't, you haven't struggled at all. 
that you don't have what you need to make it through what you're going to face next week. Yeah, I can't see that. But I serve a God that knows everything. And he can, he can look at my life and the, the trajectory thereof, and he knows that, that there's going to be things that I'm going to face that I need that strength for. I don't understand it. This is the part. This is the part where so I, I lose some people, and, and some people they, they, they expect a, a preacher or, or a Christian to have all the answers, right? We're supposed to have it all figured out because God tells us everything. No, I don't know why. You know, there, there was a man that, 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 I, that taught me a lot when I was when I was a, a young manager. Because when you're young, sometimes you, want, you think you have all the answers, right? And one of the things he loved to do is call people out and ask for questions that he already knew the answer to that you didn't. And he, he told me, he pulled me aside when I was 22 years old and said, Look, Mark, don't ever be afraid to say, I don't know. I don't know. So there's a lot of things that we face in our life that we can say that we can ask those questions of why, 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 I, I don't know. And that's okay to not know. It's okay to not understand. See, I, I don't understand, but here's what I do. I trust that I serve a God that has my best interest in heart. That he has, he has good plans for me, not evil. That he isn't just going to leave me in a caterpillar state, but his desire for me is to be a butterfly one day. His desire for me is to be a mature Christian. His desire for me is to overcome. His desire for me is not just to stay in that same over and over again place where I'm just struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. But that struggle is for a purpose because he wants you to become strong. So that you can overcome the trials and tests of life that are going to come your way. We're not just navigating life alone. We're co heirs with Christ. Wrap your mind around that for just a minute. And sharing in his struggles, co heirs, we, we, we think co heirs is, is all good things, and it, there's a lot of good. But read through the Word of God and you see really quickly that there's a lot of struggles that Christ endured also. There's a lot of trials and tests that he, he was involved with. So when we're co-heirs with Him, we don't just get to cherry-pick with God. Because those, those great things, there's also some struggles that we've got to go through. But the difference is that we are holding on to this, that we also, in those struggles that we get to share in His glory, that the hardships today, they can't hold a candle to the glory that God is unfolding in our lives. Some of you sitting in this place right now, that a month ago, you would have never thought God would have been working the way that it is, but you're sitting here today, and you're watching God move and work in different ways in your life. And let me just prophesy for just a minute to tell you that if you continue going to the rest of your going and continue fighting and continue struggling and continue working, that God's going to continue to bless you and help you overcome and help you get where He wants you to be. Because I know that if I walk with Him, He's also walking with me. And if He's with me, who can stand against me? If God is in us, who's against us? It doesn't matter. We're standing side by side with Christ, facing life challenges, knowing that our destiny is intertwined with His. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, or I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 8. It says, We are pressed on every side by troubles. Can anybody amen that? Amen. Pressed on every side with troubles. But we are not crushed. We're perplexed. You might feel that one. Parents told me we were in the car. 
trying to do a TikTok. I wish she was in here. I would embarrass the snot out of her. She wanted me to do a TikTok. Dad, you be in TikTok with me. Ooh. Thanks. And she said, but I want you to do that one face that you do. That's what I got. But I want you to do that one face that you do. I said, what face is that, Paris? She said, not that one right there, Dad. She said, okay, let me try again. She said, nope, not that one either. She said, I want you to do that one face where, where it's, you're trying to figure out what I'm doing and you think it's kind of funny, but you really don't want to laugh at me. That's the face I want you to do. Sorry, Paris, I thought those were the same faces. <laughs> right? Perplexed. Sometimes I just get perplexed with a 13-year-old girl. <laughs> Sometimes it's a 23-year-old boy. Sometimes it's the two in between. Love you guys. Sometimes it's me. Right? Sometimes I'm perplexed with me. Honey, what's wrong? I have no idea. All I know is I something's wrong. I just know I'm grouchy. That's all I know. Right? I've, I've gotten, okay, in my old age, right? Some of you laugh at me, some of you, yeah. In my old age, I've gotten more okay with, well, it's just going to be one of those gratitude days. <laughs> trying to do better. So, so, I'm trying to do better, Karen. I'm trying. Give me a second. I'm perplexed. Right? But not driven to despair, the Bible says. We're hunted down. Everybody ever feel that one? Everybody feel like the devil's just got you in his crosshairs? But the enemy's just attacking you and attacking you and attacking you, and he's just chasing you. And just every time that you turn around, you just he's nipping at your heels, trying to get you. But the Bible says, never abandoned by God. Hunted but never abandoned by God. We didn't get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Not destroyed. Broken, but not broke. Right? Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Picture Paul writing to the Corinthians, <coughs> describing being pressed, perplexed, and hunted, yet not crushed. Not in despair, not abandoned. Church, our bodies and our lives, we're going to face hardships. But it's those very struggles that the life of Jesus shines through us. Anybody can look like a Christian when everything's going right. Anybody can look like a Christian when the bank account's full, when the job's perfect, when the kids are behaving cars are running, when you don't need new tires, anybody can look like a Christian in those moments. What really lets our light shine to the world, I'm not talking about virtue signaling to everybody else in the church that we're a good person, I'm talking about the world. What really lets our light shine to the world isn't lying and saying how everything's so great all the time. It's not saying that all my problems have ever, all, ever, ever since I just started coming to that church, all my problems just went away. Just like magic. Master Ben sprinkled some pixie dust on my head and it just went away. Oof. Because that's not reality. And when you're trying to reach someone, people see through that really quickly. So what does let our light shine is when we're in those problems where we are struggling. We're in those problems where we're perplexed, where we're hunted, but we let our light shine and we're not crushed and we're not abandoned. And every trial is a stroke from the master's hand painting the picture of resilience a testament to the power of Christ 
that my struggle is for a purpose. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Galatians 6 and 9, with its bold statement, it reminds us, don't tire of doing good. Don't get tired of doing the right thing, saint of God. Keep at it. Even when it doesn't necessarily feel like that it's working in your life, even though it might not feel like that, that it's all coming together, don't get tired of doing the right thing. In due time, the harvest is coming. It's like planting seeds that what you sow today don't just magically sprout up and you get to reap it today. But it takes time that what you sow today, that you've got to water, that you've got somebody to, to let somebody come by and pick the weeds out of, that you've got to let somebody fertilize, and you've got to let God give the increase. And then one day, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but one day, you will reap from what you have sown. Keep at it. Because the purpose of your perseverance is the harvest of blessings in your life. You are tending a garden, saint of God. Watering seeds of goodness. Knowing that there is a harvest awaiting for you. Your struggle catalyst is always for a purpose. Carry it down. Some close in the morning. I want to soak in some assurance from Isaiah. See, not always is the Word of God this big, bold proclamation. We've learned through His Word that sometimes it's just that still, small voice, Brad just whispering in our ear. Because the world gets the bold part really right all the time. They overcompensate with the boldness. But the word of God in Isaiah 41 and 10, I can just hear it whispering in our ear. Fear not, for I'm with you. There's no need to panic. God's got our backs. God's given us strength. God's, God's going to hold us up with His victorious hand. As we stand today, picture yourself standing in the confidence of God. With that still small voice speaking into your heart and your life, don't be afraid. I'm right here with you. Keep fighting. But that strength and confidence that comes from God's presence, knowing that that same hand that's holding you is the ones that created the heavens and the earth. That there's no place that I would rather be than right in the presence of God even if it's in my caterpillar stage, church. Even if it's in my struggle. Because the struggle we face is no accident. Caterpillars don't just get in that cocoon for no reason. It's for a purpose. There's people in here today that came in tired of struggle. just want somebody to make it all easy. I wish I could have preached to you a message that makes it easy. But the struggle is for a purpose, same as God. Those tears are for a reason, Mama. Dad, that heartache that you feel, that, that struggle that you're going through is for a purpose. God's transforming you is what's happening. And in this place today, there's transformation that happens every week. Person after person.
These altars are open. Let's lift our hands right now as she sings. We hope today's message spoke to you. If you want to know more about Catalyst, you can go to IamCatalyst.net. And we'd love to have you in the room one Sunday. God is for you and so are we. We'll see you next time.